Welcome to our Better Together series. I'm Bill Kish. I'm the co-chief executive officer of Gulf and Fraser. And joining me today are Jeff Schufelt, my other co-CEO at Gulf and Fraser, along with Brian Harris, the CEO of Interior Savings. In today's episode, we will be talking about why a merger of Gulf and Fraser and Interior Savings, along with other questions that we've received from our members. For our first episode, I get to be the host and I get to ask questions of my colleagues. So let's get started. You've both been involved in the credit union system, Brian, for you for a little bit now, Jeff, for a long time. Brian at Interior Savings, Jeff with Gulf and Fraser. If you'd both share a bit about your experience and where the idea of merging our collective credit unions originated. Yeah, I've almost been uh, 30 years in the credit union system and seen quite an evolution. Uh, our credit union had two branches and about 40 employees, and there were at one time 300 credit unions in our province. And I believe there's 32 left. So there's been an awful lot of change as uh, credit unions have responded to market conditions and opportunities. And uh, we're, we're always looking at what's best for our members. Uh, every year we sit down and do strategy, assess the environment um, and look at the opportunities. And our industry has changed dramatically the last, uh, well, continuously, but certainly the last five years. We expect a lot of change in the coming couple of years. Uh, and so it's important that uh, we respond on behalf of our members and communities to make sure that we have a strong credit union. Great. And Brian? Yeah, so I'm a year into uh, my time with Interior Savings now, and I, I think I've spent the last 10, 15 years predominantly working overseas, working with a variety of financial institutions, be it fintech, cooperatives, big banks, little banks. And as Jeff said, I think that that shift in terms of that competitive environment it is pretty significant and Canada is certainly in the midst of it and in many respects following on the heels of what you've seen in Europe and, and the UK and other markets. And I think as, as Jeff said, we've got a responsibility to adapt and deliver what our members are looking for. And I think for me, that's the thing that I've been most impressed with is this incredible enthusiasm and commitment to the member, but we have an equal responsibility to continue to innovate and bring new things to members that they're looking for. And I think that's really, uh, probably for all of us is, is the thing that drives us in, in terms of why does it make sense to be coming together to give us the capacity to do more. Absolutely. Jeff, it might be insightful for our viewers to understand the main factors or motivations behind the consideration of our merger. Yeah, as, as I said, there has been a lot of change in our industry. There were 3,000 credit unions in Canada at one time, and there's about 200. Um, at one time, we were pretty homogeneous, and now there, there are uh, very different offerings from credit unions. Um, our supporting systems and vendors have changed dramatically, and uh, we're at a point where credit unions actually have to probably take more control of their own destiny than they did in the past. Uh, the lens that we often use when we're considering a merger is what does it mean to our members, obviously, what does it mean to our staff, what does it mean to the strength of our credit union, and uh, ultimately our relationship with the community and our ability to support and be involved in the community. So um, there's a lot, of, a lot of change and we have to consider those factors when we, we look at a potential merger. A lot of factors for sure. Brian, maybe you could share some of the key milestones that have been accomplished in the process so far. Yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. <laughs> it, um, <clears throat> you know, really, I think pretty much from the first couple of weeks when I met you and Jeff, uh, right after joining Interior, I actually met you both at, uh, at a conference before I even joined uh, Interior Savings. And really, it has been a, a, a pretty phenomenal pace for us and certainly many of our team uh, over that period. I really think getting our boards together and not only aligned, but incredibly supportive of the rationale for the merger. You know, when we went through and, and did that that memorandum of understanding, that, that was a significant accomplishment, I think, to really get everything out on the table in terms of why are we doing this? What's the value to members? How is this going to positively impact employees? And <clears throat> what does it afford us to do even more for our communities? And once you have all of that down, I think it was really then the biggest milestones were really just interacting with our regulator, getting our executive teams to work together, going through due diligence. So all of those normal processes. But I think the biggest part of that has really been that sense of team and that sense of purpose and working together, which has been throughout. And we're at a pretty 
instrumental and uh, critical point in this process where we have everything submitted to the regulator. And now, you know, it's our responsibility to make sure that members, employees, our communities understand that why and understand the benefits that accrue to each one of those stakeholders. It really is quite the journey and it feels like we've been working together here for quite a while now. Jeff, can you walk us through the decision-making process for the merger and the involvement of our collective membership? Yeah, the, it really starts first with understanding your members and uh, you know why would you even consider a merger and who would you consider it with? Um, one of the things that we've seen uh, over the years is the mobility of our members and the mobility of our staff has changed dramatically. Uh, when we actually look at who are our members, we're seeing them spreading across the province now. Uh, we have a lot of members in the Okanagan on Vancouver Island. You know, originally they were basically in Vancouver, Richmond, um, and they've started to obviously migrate for, for work, for retirement, uh, change of lifestyle. Um, the last couple of years, we've actually seen now employees doing the same thing, you know, wanting to stay with the credit union, um, but moving for family reasons, affordability of housing. Uh, so when you really look at where the members are and where the staff are, um, we were starting to see them all around the province. And that led us to a dialogue about how could we serve our members better. We had a pretty good branch network of almost 30 branches, um, but we had literally thousands of members that were through other parts of the province. Uh, and that started the dialogue about what, what could be possible for, for building a provincial credit union to respond to our shifting uh, members and employees. And that led to our conversation with Interior that maybe there was something possible. but. Frankly, that was rooted in the fact that we've worked with Interior Savings literally for decades on different initiatives, as you have to in our industry. Um, but there was kind of a natural uh, relationship with Interior. We, we looked at some of the challenges the same way. We, we had some of the same solutions to run our credit unions, to serve our members. Uh, and so it was a little bit natural to say, with our moving members, um, let's look at Interior Savings, uh, very strong credit union. Um, our credit union is very strong and uh, we're coming from a, a position of real strength as opposed to sometimes, you know, mergers are forced upon you or you're in a, a situation where you need some help kind of uh, by partnering with someone else. This was really about opportunity. It can be very powerful when you take two strong credit unions and put them together. Brian, how do you feel the process has been going so far? Any challenges you've noted? Look, I think every merger goes through challenges. I mean, that's just kind of part of the equation. But I think what I've been unbelievably impressed with is just the ongoing open communication, uh, just a real sincerity in, in terms of the process. And so I think that openness, that transparency, and that sense of, of in it together is is really if we stick to that, and we've seen that boards, we've seen that in our teams, we've seen that amongst ourselves, um, that that's really what helps mergers become incredibly successful is because you're you're doing it for the right reasons and you're doing it together. Um, and, and I think that will continue. There will continue to be challenges, just like there are in everyday business, yeah. uh, but it's about working through them together. For sure, we keep moving forward. And one final question from your perspective, what do you see is the biggest benefit of a merger? and? And what would they present for Golf and Fraser and Interior Savings? Well, again, I would use the lens, the, all the constituents you have to consider. What, what is the opportunity for employees? And certainly a growing organization creates opportunities for people, more training, um, more prospects of different types of jobs within the credit union. For the members, um, being able to be served in different communities where they move, may move to, um, new products and services, uh, greater lending capabilities. And the reality is right now, uh, we're seeing quite a transition in our industry of, of new competitors entering the market. And uh, there's a fair bit of investment that needs to be made. Historically, we could rely on system vendors to do that, uh, but it's changed. And now we need to kind of take control of our own destiny. And uh, we would have the resources with these two credit unions coming together to actually respond to those opportunities and, and uh, you know, hopefully create a offering for our members and potential members that uh, would be appealing. That's great. Thanks to both Brian and Jeff. And thank you for joining us to learn more about the proposed merger of Interior Savings and Gulf and Fraser. Our collective members, 
Members of both Gulf and Fraser and Interior Savings will be the ones who will ultimately vote on this merger this fall, and you'll continue to see much more information about this vote and the important role that you'll have. In our next Better Together episode, the three of us will be chatting about the benefits of a potential merger from our perspectives as your CEOs. If at any time you have questions or want to learn more about the merger vote, please visit www.togetherwearebetter.ca. 